reasons. You may not know this, but the Fuhrer was an excellent dancer. That's because you were taken in by the verdant allied propaganda. Such lies, such filthy lies. But no, they never said anything bad about Winston, did they? No, not when with Winnie. Churchill with his cigar and his brandy and, you know, Hitler was a much better painter. Churchill, he couldn't paint at all. Hitler, he could do one apartment, in, in, an apartment in one afternoon, two coats. And Churchill, he couldn't even say Nazis, could he? Noses, noses, it wasn't noses, it was Nazis. And you know what? And you're hearing this shred from the horse. Hitler was a better comedian. He had better hair, he dressed better, he painted better, and he could dance the pants off of Churchill. Thank you. My name is Brian Grobener, and I will be doing a piece from Mr. Martin Lane. Rita was a real character. She had a tattoo on her upper inner thigh that says, Slippery When Wet. You're probably wondering how I know that. One night, we got wasted doing tequila shooters when Rita stands up in the middle of the bar and pulls her pants down. And I'm like, whoa, Rita, you're my best friend's girlfriend. I don't want to see your upper inner thigh. But there she was in the middle of a bar with her pants down, just wink. Anyways, anyways, that's how I saw the tattoo. Their breakup was a real mess. Rita and Raymond's. She burned most of his stuff, including his antique toy collection, which he loved more than anything. Like I said, Rita was a real character. Thank you. And cauldron bubble. 
fillet of a fanny snake in the cauldron, boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. Adder's fork and blind worm steam, lizard's leg and howl its wing. For a charm of powerful trouble in a cauldron, boil and bubble. Eddie, don't, don't get around like that, Eddie. 
No, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. No, take your time. You can call me back whenever you want. I'm really proud of you, Eddie. You made it. Talk to you later, then. Bye-bye. See you. something that had it, um, fox or a raccoon. Bats can have it too. It's, uh, travels from the bite to the spinal cord, then the brain. It causes high fever, uncontrollable excitement, and spasm of the throat muscles. That's what causes them to salivate. They can't swallow water. Can you imagine not being able to swallow? That must suck. It's weird. We had him vaccinated when he was a puppy, but I guess that doesn't always work. We had a funeral for him. Well, me and my sister had a funeral, and I don't know, I, I guess I was supposed to say something, and I couldn't think of anything to say, so I just stood there, frozen, like an idiot. My brain went numb, and I don't know, I couldn't think of anything to say. <laughs> It was really weird to me because it's never happened before. I mean, there's always something going on up there, right? Even in the subconscious. And uh, I don't know. People meditate to clear their minds, and I just don't get that. I mean, 
I, I never want to have a clear mind again. I mean, I don't know. Have you ever had someone close to you die? And, you know, you're stuck in this morbid place. And there's so much death that you feel like you're not even there. That maybe you're dead too. Maybe it's just 
a matter of time until she finds the right medicine, the right therapist. I thought maybe then things will get back to normal. That day, we had planned to eat breakfast together. I called her, but she didn't enter the phone. I thought she turned it off and slept late, so I went to her apartment and knocked on her door. It was unlocked, so I went in and I found her lying on the floor in the kitchen. Why didn't she come to me? I would have done anything for her. Anything. Didn't she know that? Thank you. Hold up, Dante. I've watched you do this your entire life. From kindergarten to 12th grade. But that's not going to happen tonight. Don't look at me like that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Remember first grade? The lunchroom? You're walking around, crying, begging for a cookie. Boo-hoo, I'm little Dante, and I am so sad. <laughs> My mommy packed nothing but veggies. Oh, I wish I had a chocolate chip cookie. If only. Here, Dante, I said kindly, you can have my chocolate chip cookie. And what did you say? I'm not hungry. Flash forward, third grade, the playground. It's a game of tag. And you're it. A hundred kids are running around, and you can't catch a single one. You're desperate, panting crying for someone to slow down so that you don't have to be it anymore. So, feeling sorry for you, because I am an idiot, I walk right up and say, here Dante, you can tag me, albeit. You say, I don't want to tag you, that's too easy. Whatever you can't have, that is what you want. That is why you have said you were in love with Kay all these years. <coughs> Every time she ignored you, you knew that deep down, she would never, ever return your affection. And that made things easy. She ignored you, so you knew, you knew, that, that made things easy and safe. You would never know what it's like to have someone who wants to be with you. That meant that you could always be alone. But is that what you want, Dante? Look at her. You've been chasing Kay like she is some sort of dream. Well, don't you want that dream to come true? Wait, why are you looking at me like that? See. I'm going to be doing a monologue from the play for colored girls. I was missing something. Something promised. Something free. Laying on hands. I know about laying on bodies. Bringing a man, laying on a man, bringing up all of my fleshy self and my pleasure, and taking full, eager, wet like I get sometimes. But I was missing something, laying on hands. I know about not a man laying on, not my mama holding me tight, telling me I'm always going to be her girl. Not a laying on a bosom wound, but a laying on of hands. My, the holiness of myself and Elise set up one night, <coughs> walking the boarding house, the ghost of a screaming, crying, the another a ghost of another woman who was missing what I was missing. I wanted to jump up on my bones and be done with myself. Leave me alone and go off into the wind. I fell into a numbness, 
the only tree I could see took me to her branches and held me in the breeze. Your horses? Pause. 
doesn't think before it is too late. You are in grave danger. I do not speak of the prisons and the gallows, but of the greater punishment that awaits you. Repent before it is too late. Just around the corner is our little mission, where you are free to seek refuge from this jungle of sin. Come here and talk to me. Do not think of me as Sergeant Sarah Brown, but as Sarah Brown, your sister. Join me, brothers and sisters, in resisting the devil, and we can put him to flight forever. Hi, my name is Sergio Munoz, and I'll be doing a piece from Mr. Marmalade. Everybody says, enjoy your childhood while it lasts. enjoy my childhood. When you're a child, you're not supposed to have a care in the world. Yet, all I would think of was how miserable my life was and how there was so much suffering in the world around me. I thought to myself, if this is a part of my life that's supposed to be carefree, then I don't want to know about the part of my life that's meant to be hard. So, one morning, before grade school, I got my brother's razor blade, and I slid my wrist. But my stepmother found me. Too bad. Let not your hated counter with my love, for 
loving word you do, which chased me in love dearly, that your dean was both herself in love. Oh, then give pity to her, whose sanctity she cannot choose but lend and give where she is sure to lose. Thank you. I'll be performing a portion of Act 5, Scene 1 from Hamlet. Give me leave. Here stands the man. Good? Good. Here lies the water. Good. If the man goes to the water and drowns himself, oh, well that is really, really, as it goes, mocking him. But if the water goes to the man and drowns him, he drowns not himself, our God. He that is not guilty of his own death shortens not his own life. Sin. Hello, my name is Alexis Garcia, and I'm going to do a play of Killing Chuck. <laughs> I fucking killed Chuck, I think. I mean, I was just, he was just laying there. He wasn't breathing. I mean, I was in the room talking to Marissa. We were talking, laughing, just having a good time. I tell her she reminds me of Sandra Bullock. And, and uh, I love the hope floats. Who knew those were the magic words? Next thing, next thing you know, her clothes were off, and we were just losing the roof shingles like there's no tomorrow. We were kissing, hugging, laughing. And um, out of nowhere, I just get this hit in my head. Yeah, I look up, and it was Chuck. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he's like, the problem is, dude, you're fucking my girlfriend. That's it. Thank you. Jonkos and 